What's up, matey potatoes? What's going on? Um, wow. <laughs> I'm so excited to play this. Uh, Morrowind is my favorite RPG of all time. Um, those of you who haven't played or hadn't seen it or maybe don't know what it is. Uh, Elder Scrolls 3, so it was the one before Oblivion. It was, um, 2001? 2002? Anyway, it's pretty old. It's pretty old. Um, so, we have used some mods. I just want to clarify for you guys. Um, but they're all, um, they're all sort of purely aesthetic mods. So, you know, high res textures and bump maps and lighting, um, and that kind of stuff. The only mod that I've got that will affect the gameplay in any way is a movement speed mod. Because for those of you who've played this before, you probably know that, like, the, the movement in this game is so, so slow. It's like intolerably slow um, when you compare it to more modern RPGs. Like, it, you, you feel like you're running on the moon um, at low levels. Um, yeah, so I've installed a mod that like bumps up the movement speed of everything um, by, you know, roughly, roughly double. But uh, everything else, gameplay-wise, is gonna be the vanilla experience. So it's gonna be a pretty, a pretty vanilla experience. Hey, what's up, Cactus Man? Interested to see why you love this game? Morrowind is the game that made me fall in love with lore and world building in video games. Um, when I played through this as a kid, I read through every book. I talked to every NPC. I, I just got so like immersed and invested um, in the world. And it was basically the point where I realized that video games were were such a, a powerful medium for creating these sort of, you know, immersive fantasy worlds, right? <laughs> anyway, I'll be hoping for some input, guys. Um, don't be afraid to, to backseat game a bit um, for this one because I'll be asking you guys to help me make decisions uh, as we go. So let's, um, let's jump in. Get into it. Let's fucking do it. Each event is preceded by prophecy, but without the hero, there is no event. In the waning years of the third era of Tamriel, a prisoner born on a certain day to uncertain parents was sent under guard without explanation to Morrowind, ignorant of the role he was to play in that nation's history. They have taken you from the Imperial City's prison. First by carriage and now by boat. To the east, to Morrowind. Fear not, for I am watchful. You have been chosen. Wake up. We're here. Why are you shaking? Are you okay? Wake up. Time for eye destroying graphics. No, I'm using um it's gonna <laughs> Oh shit, have we already encountered? Uh, no, there we go, we're good, we're good. Hello? What's your name? Hello? Oh hello, Giub. Alright. What's our name? Hmm. No in-game subtitles? I don't think there are any in-game subtitles. Um well, I mean, they're, they're, you, you'll see, you'll see Hex, so there's like text boxes. Um, but for the, the few like bits of voice acting, they are, uh, they don't have subtitles. Really? I think it should be Chungo. See, we're in Morrowind, you guys. We're, we're in Morrowind, so we could be Chungo. We could be Chungo, or we could be anything. I, <laughs> Chihungo. <laughs> I normally play um, Dunmer, right? Because, you know, that's that's where my, like, Dark Elf session came from. Newton thinks I should just be Ethers. Well, we could be Grunty. We could be Grunty. 
No, Mike is already in the game. My my last name, my character's name in Final Fantasy XIV is actually like a, a Elder Scrolls sort of law friendly name. Ethis Ra'anthim. Ra'anthim is one of the families of uh, House Hualu. Um, and uh, Baron Zaya was a member of uh, Ra'an theme for a few. Right, let's be, let's be Granta, Granta Mollus in the gravel. <laughs> Good? Yeah? You speak up, Jim. Quiet. Here comes the car. This Hello. You get off. Come with me. Um, that is some low voice. I might turn the the voice up a little bit. Okay. Let's do that real quick. Might have to play around with the volume a little bit. Oh look, the voice is quite high. Let's like crank the voice like all the way up. All the way up. Put it right up. Because again, the few bits of voice acting we don't actually get. They say. Um, I love the uh, the Dunma voices in this game. So you guys may notice that it's in um, huh? it's in Oblivion, right? Man, the voice acting in Oblivion is something else, isn't it? The the Dark Elves in Oblivion are all like, "Oh, hello there, I'm an elf." Mm. They just sound like all the other all the other elves, and in um, Skyrim, they all they all have a bit of a Michael Caine thing going, don't they? Um, but dude, nice hair. But they all have such uh, such unique voices in um, in Morrowind. I really love it. They smoke like eighty a day. Well, they live on a on a volcano. Like it sort of makes sense that they've got these really raspy voices. So, <laughs> I've got an HD textures mod, but um, I think I've got just like the vanilla hair. <laughs> so there's gonna be there's gonna be a bit of that. Like the animations are all vanilla and the models are all vanilla, um, just with H HD textures. So it's gonna look pretty uh, pretty interesting. Okay, what are we? Are we gonna be a Dunmer? Should we be a dark elf? Should we should we try to fit in, or are we going to be like a proper outlander? I'm thinking we should be a Dunmer. That's what I'm thinking personally. Like I say, guys, feel free to make um, any input at any time. I'm not too fussed about backseat gaming in this. You're always Argonian. Oh, gross! I'm not gonna be a fucking Argonian. I'm not gonna be a, a filthy marsh friend. Disgusting Marsh friend. Well met, Marsh friend. Not a chance. Hmm. Snacks rule. Well, I'm not gonna be a Marsh friend. Let's um. Let's go, with Dark Elf. Let's go. Oh, he's he's handsome, isn't he? Oh, look at that. And I, oh my God, these airs. <laughs> Always the minor minority race. Well, Dunmer are a majority in Morrowind. Um, like fifty percent of the population of Vardenfell is uh, is Dunmer. All right, we're gonna go with that. Now, um, unlike a lot of more modern RPGs, your racial skill bonuses and your racial uh, specials like do matter in a major, major way. Like, look at this. Resist fire 75%. That is ridiculous. Um, and I get boosts to, big boost to destruction, which we're probably not gonna use that much, and short blade, which is pretty handy. And then like a little bit to a bunch of other stuff. They're pretty good all-rounders. So we'll go with that. Yeah, we'll go with that. That's good. I like that. I like that one. Green. I'm sure I will. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going up to the uh, the Sedanin Census Office, um, where we will choose our our class, or we will build our class. This um, 
This uh, opening is like so, <laughs> so memorable to me. I don't know why. All the Old Scrolls ones are, to be fair, though, but this one, like, in particular. Hello? Ah, uh, yes, we've been expecting you. Uh, you'll have to be recorded before you're officially released. There are a few ways we can do this, and the choice is yours. You guys having trouble hearing uh, the in-game? All right, let me, let me... Let me turn up the master volume, then. Okay. The pre-prequel to Skyrim is looking good. It is looking good, isn't it? Um, I think we should create a custom... Custom class. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll call it Adventurer. That's fine. So, basically... Oh, man, this is crazy. So, we get to choose what kind of character we want to be. We can choose our major skills, which we get, um, like, a plus 10 or, or plus 20, something like that. Maybe plus 15. And then minor skills, we get... A little bit less um and then we get our favorite attributes we get a, a boost in those attributes as well there you go you get a plus 10 to each of your favorite attributes and then i think it's like plus another plus 20 and plus 10 or plus 10 and plus 5 i'm not sure um so what do you guys think oh and then we get like an extra um uh like experience buff generated towards the the specialization that we want so if we're a combat specialist, we will level up combat skills a little bit faster. Magic's the same for that, and stealth, obviously, for, for stealth skills. So you think <laughs> you think I should make a Dragoon? You reckon we should go athletics, um, acrobatics, and uh, and spear? I mean, we could do, like, the classic Elder Scrolls build of being, like, you know, a sneaky sort of um, uh, archer cross, like, knight blade with like um, bows and then short blades and uh, like illusion magic. Sneaking is for wusses. Okay, all right. Okay, what do you guys think? A Dragoon then? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> Although, oh yeah, make a Dragoon? All right, fine, we'll make a Dragoon because the acrobatics in this game is actually like hilarious when you get to really high levels, it's amazing. Um, okay. Well, I'm guessing a Dragoon would be, like, medium armor. And you don't get spears in, um, Skyrim or... I don't think spears are in Oblivion either, are they? I don't think so. Be the lol Dragoon you were meant to be. Okay, fine. They aren't. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it does. Um, okay, fine. So we will go with strength and we will go with agility. I think that would be good. Major skills. Uh, spear. <laughs> Major skills. Acrobatics. <laughs> I reckon medium armor. Yeah. Medium armor. Um, it was athletics. Athletics is there. And then I'm thinking it might be handy to have like Speechcraft? All of the more like RPG skills in this are really, really useful as well. So with Speechcraft, you can like intimidate people into attacking you. So if I want to kill someone, but I don't want to like get in trouble for it, um, and there's a lot of people around, then I can just insult him. And if my Speechcraft is high enough, I can actually just like insult him so much that he, he attacks me. And then I don't get in trouble for killing him. <laughs> All right, we'll go, we'll go Speechcraft. Either that or Mercantile. I'm not too worried about Mercantile. I think we'll go Speechcraft. Okay. So we're committed to medium armor. Then minor skills, we will go... Um, restoration would be good. I'm trying to think... Yeah, Alteration could be good. Because we can, uh, we can make Alteration spells. Actually, that's an idea. Party! Yo, Lucky Ariane, thank you so much for the host, I appreciate it. I'm actually going to go Alteration, because we can get some um, magic to boost our uh, our acrobatics, right? So we can, like, cast spells on ourselves to make us jump really high with Alteration. Hey, Ariane. 
Oh, and thank you, Arco. Guys, go go check out Ariane and hang out with her sometime. She's uh, she's awesome. She's a good stream, good streamer, best best stream. Um, okay, then for miners, let's go speechcraft. Let's go. Marksman. Because we might need that at some point. Um, we're not gonna bother with, with block blocks for blocks for pussies. Let's go heavy armor, maybe? Because we could use like a combo of, of medium and heavy. And let's go. Enchant could be pretty nice. But I think restoration. We can actually like heal ourselves would be good. A hard earned sub gives me a big old chuckle. Hey, Flaky Spec, thank you so much for the resub. What's up, dude? What's going on, buddy? Sad dude. Sad dude. What's up, man? Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Okay. Um, and the name is going to be Dragoon. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. The letter that preceded you mentioned you were born under a certain sign. Is that a bit better? And what would that be? And what would what would would that be? Um The signs are a really big deal as well. So look at this. We get um one point so we get basically fifty percent extra magicka, but we also have weakness to all magic, fifty percent, which is really, really rough. Um this one's really interesting. We get double maximum magicka but we um we can't regenerate it uh naturally we can only regenerate it through attacking people through spell absorption or, or through is, is it, it's either no it's by taking damage from spells I think. Hard sub gives me a big old chuck <laughs> oh my god geek geek thank you so much holy shit Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, the lady gives us an ability that we can, two abilities that we can use once per day to fortify personality and endurance, respectively. The Lord gives us permanent 100% weakness to fire, but um, gives us a pretty good healing spell. I don't like that. The Lover gives us fortified agility, um, and Lover's Kiss. It's just really, really, look at this. It's so good. Paralyze and uh, damage fatigue. So, you know, it's it's crazy. It's such a good power, but we can only use that once a day. Um, the mage, the ritual, serpent. Shadow is a really handy one um, for thieves. You can go invisible once per day for 60 seconds, which is nice. Charioteer. Again, these these are these are abilities. These aren't like passives. Um, I kind of prefer the ones that have passives. The tower is really handy just for having this um, unlock spell for fifty points on touch. The warrior fortify attack ten points. Oh, I really can't decide, you guys. I I really can't decide. What do you think? Does anyone have like a favorite star sign? No? The lady is quite good. I quite like the lover. Lover's kiss is very good and fortify agility is gonna be really, really handy um, near the beginning because uh, we'll be more accurate. The kiss is the one I always took. Yeah. So one thing about the combat in this game, which you guys are going to see, um, which is a very, very old school um, sort of RPG combat experience, um, is uh, particularly at the beginning, you miss like way more times than you hit. Uh, there, there's actually like a hit detection roll, um, which is very sort of, you know, old school Dungeons and Dragons. But it is terrible. <laughs> it is so, so frustrating. If you're using a weapon that you don't have like high skill with, not only will you be doing shit damage with it, but like nine times out of 10, you, you won't even hit, you'll just miss. Go the Lord get turned into a vamp for hard mode gameplay. No, I don't want to do that. 
I think he used the towel. The towel's pretty good. I'm gonna go with the, the lover. I'm gonna go with the lover. That's a good sort of clench one. Now before I stamp these papers, make sure this information is correct. Hey Zellion, what's up, dude? We happy with that? So we're starting with 75 agility. Oh, that is so nice. Holy shit. That's gonna help a lot with that hit detection. And 50 strength, that's pretty good. Um, Spear is at 35, Athletics at 40, Acrobat, okay. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty happy with all that. And uh, we've naturally got Short Blade at 15, just through like Rachel's. Have a great night, everyone. Oh, Smile. thank you. Thank you, Arian. Thank you so much. Yeah, we've naturally got both Short Blade and Long Blade at 15, so... In a pinch, we, we might be able to switch over to those and it won't be completely used. We've got shield, we've got water walking. Why do we have water walking? Oh, because we chose alteration. Oh, oh, because we chose to major in alteration. We actually start with um, a couple of alteration spells. We start with water walking, that's OP. And we start with uh, five point shield for 30 seconds. That's really nice, I like that. You running any mods for this? Only, uh, only aesthetic mods, um, and movement speed. <laughs> the only gameplay we mod we've got is like doubling movement speed. Um, but uh, yeah, this is going to be like a very vanilla experience, other than like HD textures. Thank you, Valdens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am well. I'm fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be playing this. Yeah, I, I know that, Matthias. I know, I know. Release identification. I will pick those. I will take that. I now have an inventory menu. Huzzah! Okay. So there we are. Man, it's such an old school uh, UI. I love it. Right, I'm just going to close this because uh, I'm going to rub you guys before I leave. Oh, hang on. There's a lockpick here. Okay, yeah, Prentice lockpick. Yeah. Yeah. Wasn't sure if you needed anything critical to run it nowadays. Nah. Not really. I mean, if you're sort of getting into it for the first time, you probably do want, like, quite a few uh, gameplay mods. But honestly, like... I, I grew up on this game, so I prefer to keep it, like, reasonably vanilla. Okay, well, I'm going to take your dagger. Um, and I don't need to drop it because I've got some hotkeys here. Okay. We now have a dagger. Congratulations. Are you enjoying the bad game by Monsieur Devil Cage? I finished it, and I really enjoyed it, honestly. Um... I, I understand the criticisms that people have of David Cage and of parts of that game, but I really enjoyed it. Okay, we got a engraved ring of healing. Which we may or may not keep. I want to keep it, but we may or may not. Okay. Hello, Captain. Celus Gravius. First, let me take your identification papers. Thank you. Word of your arrival only reached me yesterday. I am Sirs Gravius, but my background is not important. I am here to welcome you to Morrowind. Yes, you're in Morrowind. I don't know why you're here, or why you were released from prison and shipped here, but your authorization comes directly from Emperor Uriel Septim VII himself. And I don't need to know any more than that. When you leave this office, you are free. But before you go, I have instructions on your duties. Instructions from the Emperor. So pay careful attention. This package came with the news of your arrival. You are to take it to Caius Cossades in the town of Balmora. Go to the South Wall Corner Club and ask for Caius Cossades. They'll know where to find him. Serve him as you would serve the Emperor himself. I also have a letter for you and a dispersal to your name. Right? Alright. Any time now. Any time now. Thanks, Patrick Stewart. There's a lot of Patrick Stewart type voices in here. I love it. Um, see if we can read this. Okay, we can't read it. It's all coded. 
That's a really long message. Wow. Look at that. That's all in code. And I don't have the skills to decode it. OMFG. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me giggle. <laughs> oh, you meant the Emperor? Oh, the, the Emperor is Patrick Stewart? Yeah, yeah, the Emperor is literally Patrick Stewart. That's true. Yeah, the, the Emperor is uh, voiced by Patrick I Stewart in Oblivion. Hey, oh my god, Fargoth, what happened to your face? <laughs> I love this. This is my favorite thing. Um, putting like really high res uh, textures on like really low poly models. <laughs> it just looks like a nightmare. Are you the one that boat shipped off? I want to see a boat arrive at that time of day. Hope the Imperials treated you okay. I swear they took my ring. I swear one of the guards has it. I had it last week before their weekly Let's Shake Down Fargoth ritual. An engraved healing ring, family heirloom of mine. You haven't seen it, have you? Should we give it to him? Should we give him his ring? <laughs> oh my god, what is that? <laughs> what mods am I using? Just, just visual stuff, just like graphics overhauls. Um, and lighting and bump mapping and stuff like that. The only gameplay mod we have is a movement speed mod. So like double our movement speed to make make it tolerable. We're gonna be an edgy boy. What do you what do you guys think? It's a family heirloom. Give it to him. I mean, I know the outcome of pretty much every quest in this game. <laughs> All right, Gravo. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna give it to him. You found it! Amazing! Thank you, thank you! You are now my favorite friend. I'll be sure to tell the others, especially my friend Unreal, who runs the trade house here. Go see him. He'll be happy to see you now. All right, there we go. You see how being a good guy turned out into trade? Turned out all right, didn't it? I think it turned out all right. What are you shaking your head at? Remember to tank the angsty option if you can. Guys, I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting that ring back. I'm just um, going to go ahead and spoil that for you. Oh my god, this movement speed is so nice. So that's running. That's walking. Even walking is like pretty, pretty good. Given that our speed's at 75, right? Um, but uh, running in this game consumes stamina. And if you've got no stamina, if you've got no stamina, you can be knocked out in a single punch. Um, and you're basically never going to hit a target in combat. Um, but, uh, this game is a lot of walking, um, and the movement speed by default is so, so, so slow that this is actually going to, like, expedite this process quite a lot. Hello, Aril! Welcome to Aril's trade house. I'm Aril, publican and proprietor. Don't take what doesn't belong to you. You're a new face here. If you want to buy from me, you have to barter. Want a little advice? Free for new customers? Just ask. Would you like to hear about our most popular potions or most popular scrolls? So, um, because I helped out Fargoth there, my disposition with this guy is already at 80 out of 100. Which basically means I get better prices with him. Which is oh, nice. Shit. Hey, Gunther, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that follow. Appreciate it. What's your accent, I hear? Uh, I'm Australian. I'm an Australian. Uh, so, how much, what, what, how much have we got in gold? When they got... 118 gold. So we've got enough that we can get a spear. Or a halberd. Let's see. 5 to 20. 11. Oh no, that's short sword. 6 to 15. Okay, I reckon we get ourselves an iron halberd. And let us also get ourselves maybe some Imperial Chain Quirash, if we can. See if he'll go down to our max for that 118. Hey, there we go. Okay, we just spent all our money. <laughs> we just spent all of our money on a Quirash and a Halberd. How are Make you? It quick, Outlander. you like Aussie accents? Everyone likes Aussie accents. Back in the day, we had no damn fast travel. That's right. I mean, there are ways to travel around, but there's no, um... 
you can't like teleport fast travel you guys will see see as we go all right we're also going to be reading a lot in this playthrough guys so we're going to start with lives of the saints um this is going to be like one great big law to it so i hope you guys are okay with that um all right lives of the saints if you would be wise model your lives on the lives of the saints if you would learn valor follow saint nerevar the captain patron of the warriors and the statesmen Lord Nerevar helped to unite the barbarian Dunma tribes into a great nation, culminating in his martyrdom when leading the, Dw the Dunma to victory against the evil Dwemer, which is uh, the, the dwarves. Um, uh, most of you guys have played Skyrim, you know who the Dwemer are. And the traitorous house Dagoth in the Battle of Red Mountain. If you would learn daring, well, it's Saint Voloth the Pilgrim, patron of outcasts and spiritual seekers. These babies just saved this lame-ass party! Follow hey, thanks very much for the host as well, Gunther. I appreciate it. Uh, Saint Veloth, prophet and mystic, led the Dunmer <clears throat> out of the decadent home country of the Somerset Isles and into the promised land of Morrowind. Saint Veloth also taught the difference between the good and bad Daedra, and won the aid of the good Daedra for his people while teaching how to carefully negotiate with the bad Daedra. If you would learn generosity, follow Saint Rilms the Barefooted, patron of pilgrims and beggars. Saint Rilms gave away her shoes, then dressed and appeared as a beggar to better acquaint herself with the poor. If you would learn self-respect and respect for others, follow Saint Aralor the Penitent, patron of tanners and miners. This foul criminal repented his sins and traveled a circuit of the great pilgrimages on his knees. If you would learn Mel's mercy in its fruits, follow Saint Seren the Merciful, patron of brewers, bakers, and distillers. This pure virgin of modest aspect could heal all diseases at the price of taking the disease upon herself. Tough-minded and fearless, she took on the burdens of others and bore those burdens to an honored old age. If you would learn fierce justice, follow Saint Felms the Bold, patron of butchers and fishmongers. This brave warlord slew the Nord invaders and drove them from our lands. He could neither read nor write, receiving inspiration directly from the lips of Um Sivi. If you would learn pride of race and tribe, follow Saint Rorus the Martyr, patron of furnishers and caravanners. Captured by Argonians just before the Arseni Ar Arnesian War, rather, Rorus proudly refused to renounce the tribunal faith and withstood the cruel tortures of Argonian sorcerers. Vengeance and justice for the martyred Saint Rorus was the rallying cry of the Arnesian War. There's a character in ESO named Saren. Saren is quite a common um, uh, Dunma name, actually. If you would learn the rule of law and justice, follow St. Olms the Just, patron of chandlers and clerks. Founder of the Ordinators, St. Olms conceived and articulated the fundamental principles of testing, ordeal, and repentance. If you would learn benevolence, follow St. Delon the Wise, patron of potters and glassmakers. St. Delon was head of House Indoril, a skilled lawyer and author of many learned treatises on tribunal law custom. Yeah, I, I just started wearing St. Anine at the moment. If you would learn the love of peace, follow St. Maris the Peacemaker, patron of farmers and laborers. As a little girl, St. Maris showed healing gifts and trained as a healer. She ended a long and bloody house war, intervening in the battlefield in her white robe to heal warriors and spellcrafters without regard to faction. The troops of all house adopted white robes as her standard and refused to shed the blood of their brethren. If you would learn reverence, follow Saint Lothus the Pious, patron of tailors and dryers. Dyers, rather. <laughs> Contemporary and companion of the tribunals and the best loved Alma ruler of the Tribunal Temple, he formulated the central rituals and principles of the New Temple faith. Saint Lothus is the symbolic mortal bridge between the gods and the faithful and the archetypical priest. There we go, lives of saints. So that's um, those those are uh, the the central saints of the uh, the Dunmer sort of native religion, which is different from uh, you know like the imperial faith. They, these they don't worship the the nine divines or eight divines. They worship um, uh, the tribunal, Vivek, Almalexia, and Sothasil, whom we're going to learn quite a bit about. Well, hello, Gruntamolus Dindagravel. I'm Raffler the Braggart. This is Sadanine, swamp fever capital of the world. <laughs> I don't want to get swamp fever. Well, I, I suppose you're wondering what's going on here. I can tell you what services are. There aren't many, and I can tell you the latest rumors, unless you've already heard them. Okay. Um, who, who is it that gives me this quest? I think it's this guy. 
Ah, uh, here we go. You look like you could use a friend, Outlander. Perhaps I could be your friend. I'd like you to help me recover some gold. That's right. See, I had a bad run of luck playing nine holes and lost a bit of money. Normally I'd be fine. We can usually keep some gold in our pockets just from the money the locals pay us for protection. But I know some of them are holding out on me, especially that little fetch of Fargoth. He's come up light in the past couple of weeks when I've shaken him down. I know he's stashing it somewhere. I'd like you to find Fargoth's hiding place. I know the little fetch has got one somewhere in town. He's not sure where yet. I've already gone through his whole house, so I know he's not hiding it there. I'd like you to find out where he's stashing his gold if you can. I'll give you a share of the wealth. Are you up to it? I'll do it! Excellent. Here's what I want you to do. I'm not sure where he goes, but I know he wanders around town at night. Watch his movements. The best vantage point is on top of the lighthouse south of town. That will give you a nice view of all of St. Denis. You keep an eye on where he goes, I'm sure you'll be able to figure out where he's hiding that gold. We need that gold, and we also want that ring back. <laughs> so, we're going to do this. You've got a lot of hours clocked in our uh, ESO. Oh, right on, dude. Um, yeah, I, um, I played ESO a lot on launch. Um, it just didn't really... I've been playing it a little bit more recently, but... As an MMO, it just doesn't really doesn't really grab me. It's like a it's a it's a pretty good MMO and it's a pretty good Elder Scrolls game, but it's not like exceptional at either of those. Oh hello. I'm not gonna try to unlock that with you looking at me. <laughs> Sorry. Um you're doing the Shio quest, I assume? Yeah, at one point we'll do that. Really missed the magic system from this game. It was so much fun doing crazy stuff with spells. Yeah, it's it's really cool getting to like uh, craft your own spells in this game, as you guys will see. It's really really fun. Let's wait nine hours. Any small plots on Kujata? Yeah, there's heaps of smalls on Kujata. Definitely. All right. The other thing we're gonna notice about this game is that it's very. Oh is that it's very, very dark at night time. Um, and that frustrates a lot of people, which I understand. Um, but at the same time, I don't know, it's like a lot more... I, I don't know, it's kind of nice for there to be like some consequences of, of night time and having it like difficult to travel at night time and stuff like that. Like, you'll find more uh, monster encounters during the night, for instance. Um, which is, uh, you know is nice like the night the night time is more dangerous and uh most rpgs like day night cycles are, are pretty arbitrary um so it's nice that it's got some consequence and this actually i think this was one of the first like proper sort of day night cycles um in a game it was the first game that i'd ever played that had a day night cycle in it that's for sure hey where is he i can't see him we have to wait a little bit a little bit later or is that him there I think that might be him there, wandering around behind that wall. We wait another hour? It might still be a little bit early. Let's wait another hour. Ah, oh, there he is. Yeah, look, he's sneaking. <laughs> the movement speed is so funny with these animations. So this movement speed mod that I've got, it works for the NPCs as well, obviously. Just bumps everyone's movement speed up by like double. This looks so funny. Where are you going? It's not very subtle, is he? You think if you're gonna sneak around, like maybe maybe don't carry the torch? Alright, so where's he going? We gotta find his hiding place. We gotta find where he's hiding his gold. Where are you going? Ah. Oh, what's he doing over there in the pond? And off he goes. All right, we're gonna go check that out. We're gonna go check that out, lads. Actually, I really hope that this. Oh, <laughs> I was about to say, I hope this fall doesn't kill me. No, we're fine. We're good. Okay, there we go. He's got a holy tree stump. Gentleman's lockpick. 300 gold, which we're going to keep, and the engraved ring of healing, which we're going to equip. And we're actually going to use immediately. We took a little bit of damage there. Oh, come on. Alright, there we go. 
Okay. We hurry this along? Oh, shush. Oh, shush. Now, I suggest we should probably wait until morning um, before we start heading out for, for Balmora. So, I'm just going to wait the rest of the night. I'm not going to bother, like, going to an inn or anything. Because we're fully healed. We don't, we don't really need, um, we don't really need a bed, do we? Wait until 6 a.m. Alright, now off to save an inn. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at our world map. <laughs> it's so bad, the map. Oh my god. Alright, let's head off to uh, Balmora already at St. Anne. So Balmora is like... Here... Here-ish? The head of this this river, so it's like... Oh, that, that's right, I can't set a marker. I'm like trying to set a marker, I'm like... no, nah, that's not a thing, I can't do that. You have the Tribunal DLC? Yeah, we've got all the DLC here. Look, we have to follow the road signs. Oh, jeez. We have to walk and follow the road signs like some kind of animal. Some kind of filthy animal. This game's graphics are going to do you in. No, they're not going to do me in. I, I've, I've got so much nostalgia for this game, honestly, that they're not going to do me in at all. 100 in Ho. Fucking so Yo! I'm so happy I did it. Now only to do it three more times. Congratulations, Plato. That's fantastic, dude. Well done. Oh, I'm real proud of you, man. I'm real, real proud of you. That is so good. Um, man, I still haven't gotten to 400. Um, I think my my best is like 50, 51 or something. Anyway, we're going to explore this cave here, um, which is probably a bad idea because there's going to be smugglers in here and they're going to kill us because we're level 1. But uh, we're going to do our best. <laughs> I'm just going to quick save before we go in. We're going to do our very best. Well, our sneak's obviously pretty low. There we go. Miss, miss, miss. Oh, hit. We got it. Oh, man. Slave key. Oh, no. We got, they got slaves in here. That's not good. Uh, and some leather boots. We might as well wear them. Better than what we currently got. Um, so, a fun thing about the combat in this game, as opposed to other Elder Scrolls games, you guys might be able to see this. Oh, it's behind my head. Hang on. Let me just move. <laughs> So you see, you've got chop, slash, and thrust, and different weapons will have like different um, values for each of those uh, attack types, right? So obviously spears are better for thrusting, whereas, um, you know, like a long sword is generally better for like uh, chopping or slashing, right? An axe is, is much better for chopping, for instance. Um, so you've actually got a couple of different attacks depending on um, uh, on your movement. So if I'm standing still, I'll do a chop. If I'm strafing, I'll do a slash. And if I'm moving backwards or forwards, I'll do a thrust. So it'll actually affect like the way you have to move um, in combat for each weapon. So like spear, you find you do like a lot of, a lot of just kind of backing up and, and sort of kiting people backwards. Whereas with, um, you know, a sword, you'll be like kiting people from side to side a lot. Just a fun, uh, fun little thing. I mean, it's pretty infuriating at the same time. Yo, Windchill! Thank you so much for the reset. What's up, dude? Eight months. That's crazy. This is It's great, though. It's great. I love it. You guys are gonna fucking love it too. I promise. All right. Oh! <laughs> Trying to use fire on me. This. Miss! Ah, oh, there he is! <laughs> uh, so that's the thing, like, if, you, if you're not very good with a weapon, like, if you've got a good weapon that you're very bad with, it's not really going to be a case of, like, you're just going to do a tiny bit of damage each time you hit with it. It's that you're never going to hit. And then when you do, you're going to do, like, a fair bit of damage. Um, but uh, we mage in spears, so it looks like we're already hitting things, and that's nice. That's pretty nice. Oh my god. It's so dark down here. What do we got? We've got a iron saber. We've got a couple pieces of gold. We've got rapidly running out of breath. Okay. I don't want a fishing pole. Fishing pole is purely aesthetic. 
I think, anyway, I'm pretty sure you can't fish in this game. I am spear. I'm pretty happy with my halberd. I don't need a nine spear. I will, however, take the Cyrodiilic Brandy, because that's worth um, a bit of gold. I am Tanto. Better than the Worn Dagger. Better than the Chitin Dagger as well. I'm being really conscious of my carry weight. Um, and I know that, like, at the beginning of the game, a lot of people want to just kind of pick up everything so they can sell it, but... Um, I'm just kind of focusing on stuff that's actually worth something. Whoa! Steel Die Katana! Holy shit. Holy shit. That's nice. Uh, moon Sugar. So this is basically, um, crack cocaine. Cliff races. I'm so ready for the cliff races. Oh my god. Yeah, Moon Sugar's cocaine. Um, and people will not trade with us while we're carrying it unless we're trading it to people that want it specifically. Um, so we're just gonna have to make sure yeah, more moon sugar. So these guys are obviously smugglers in this cave. They're smuggling drugs, they're smuggling weapons. Skooma, that's another drug. Pillows? Oh, let's take some pillows, fuck yeah. Oh man. We're gonna get a house and we're just gonna fill it with like pillows and books. It's gonna be the best. It's gonna be so good. Make some skooma, fuck yeah dude. Need to sleep after getting high? Yeah, skooma is refined uh, moon sugar. Yeah, it's refined into like a, a liquid state. Uh, is there anything under here? A lot of, a lot of uh, treasure hidden in like nooks and crannies as well. Oh my god, it's so dark. We're gonna have to find a torch like real soon for uh, dungeon diving. We'll read your fortune for skooma, yes? Yeah, well that's what we're gonna be doing actually. We're gonna find a Khajiit to sell it to. Left pauldron. That's the other thing. So rather than having just um uh like uh, a chest piece like we've got in Skyrim for instance, your your sort of top half of your armor is made up of a, a queer ass or a chest piece and then a left pauldron and a right pauldron and a left glove and a right glove. Which is kind of cool. Coca-Cola, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Is, is that cocaine cola? Oh my god, it's so dark! <laughs> I really do need a torch. There we go, there's a torch. This is the this is the only annoying thing about using um, uh, a two-handed weapon is that we can't have a torch out while we've got it, while we've got it out, and we have to like manually like switch back and forth. We can't like hot bar a torch. Down here. Oh, it's going back to the entrance. No. Ah, hello! Hello, my friends! Badargo, you can go free. Get the fuck out of here. Go on. Off you go, matey. You too. So, um... The Dark Elves have, like, a long history of, uh... Of keeping Khajiits and Argonian slaves. And, uh, the Empire has outlawed slavery. But, a lot of people don't really care about that. It's still happening a lot, particularly in uh, parts of Morrowind where there's not like a strong Imperial presence. So um, there's, there's a huge uh, like slave smuggling trade. Um, and there's a lot of demand for it in, you know, particularly like the northern and the north, uh, the north eastern parts of Vardenfeld where there aren't really any Imperials. Slavery is still legal in Vardenfell at the time? I don't think so. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm wrong about that, Treo, but I'm pretty sure that um, slavery was, was outlawed. That was like one of the um, the requisites of uh, Morrowind's sort of participation in the Empire, if you will. It's just that the Imperials kind of don't exactly turn a blind eye to it, but they don't exactly police it either. You know what I mean? 
Anyway, so that's an Imperial fort over there. Oh! What's attacking me? Oh, shit! Gross. Kwama Forager. We're getting really lucky with these hits, actually. It's quite nice. I think it's because I got quite high, um... Oh, yeah, I got 75 agility. That's it. Oh, that's so good. Honestly, that is so good. Not trying to be a smartass. No, 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 that's cool. Absolutely. Protected by Lauren Morrowind. The ex exception was granted by Tyber Septon in the armistice of uh, Second Era 896, a concession to the Dumbo. Okay, great. Yeah, I, um, I, I wasn't uh, sure what the deal was. That's very interesting. So I wonder... I wonder... Because traditionally what the Dunno would do, right, is they'd, um, they'd invade other lands and they'd go, like, marauding down into the Black Marsh and they'd sort of capture, um, Argonians to take as slaves, right? So I gotta imagine that at this time it's, like, illegal to do that, you know what I mean? It's like they can't, they can't really, like, go to war, but I suppose any slaves that they've already got is kind of free game. So I guess a lot of the smugglers are, um are the ones that are still, like, marauding down there and, like, bringing in new slaves. You know what I mean? Where's the HD graphics mod? We've got an HD graphics mod. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm using an HD graphics mod. Dumbers are responsible for lifts their tail? Yes. Yeah, the Dumber are responsible for a lot of strange things. Okay, so that is, uh, this is Pelagaya. This is an Imperial town. We might as well stop here. Why not? We'll stop here on the way through. What's this about? But you'll notice that... Oh my god, you're really short. <laughs> you're really short guard! What the hell? Imperials are supposed to be like the same height as Dunmer. The building's actually really pretty. Oh, the game's really pretty. Um, this HD texture pack is, is really, really nice. It's just, it's still on the same like low poly models. But you've got this kind of interesting juxtaposition. Buildings are actually very pretty. Um, oh no, I can't trade anything here because I've got I've got the drugs. Morrowind has some creativity behind it. Oh, this game is like incredibly creative and incredibly immersive. Um, and uh, I guess with the graphical limitations of the time, it's it's well not just the graphical limitations but like the memory limitations of the time as well i mean this this game is huge like the map of this game is bigger than skyrim um there's more like content in this than skyrim there's more like quests and stuff um if you don't count the uh what's that like smart questing system they've got in skyrim where it will just like unlimited it'll just like keep generating like random quests i have played here so i quite like uh yeah so is is a, neither a great RPG nor a great Elder Scrolls game, unfortunately. Radiant Quests, yeah, that's one thing. It's not so bad. It's all right. It's okay. Like this, that's the thing. And and again, it's frustrating because you know every other Elder Scrolls game is just like so fantastic, and ESO is like just okay. <laughs> Isn't that normal for older RPG games? Or older games in general. It is, yeah. What, having like a big world? Yeah. Um, it is, but it's also like quite dense. It's not like a lot of big empty spaces. Which like Oblivion in particular is like a lot of empty space. A lot of How negative space. You, Hello. Begging your pardon, have you seen a bandit nearby? I must find him. Yes, I was just walking along here, minding my own business. Suddenly a bandit jumped at me from behind. He was a dark elf, a strong, dashing dark elf. He didn't harm me in any way, although he did take my jewels. He was quite gentle, and he talked to me for what seemed like forever. What's that? Oh, never mind the jewels. I just want to find the bandit again. He was charming and funny, and I simply must see him again. His name? Nellos. Nellos Onmar. A name that will stay on my lips for eternity. Perhaps you can find me. find him for me. Please, I cannot live without knowing if he could ever love me. I have nothing to offer you in return, but could you not help me for the sake of love? <laughs> you guys think? Is that Angelina Jolie? Oh my god. <laughs> it totally is. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, whoever's made this mod for the uh, the, the HD 
uh, faces, textures. Seems to have a bit of an Angelina Jolie fixation, huh? No? It's me. You know what? We'll accept this quest and like, if we find him, we'll find him. He mentioned something about having to head north, so I imagine he might be found in Pelagayad. Please, if you find him, give him this glove for me as a token of my love. I'm certain he will want to find me again. Okay, so I guess next time we're in Pelagayad, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can find him. Alright. Onwards and upwards, as they say. I must needs play ESO to compare the two. I, um... They do. They they have um they have voice acting in the quest. The the quests are like some of them are good. A lot of them are, are still like go and fetch me twenty bear dicks kind of stuff, you know what I mean? Particularly in like the base game. We're looking here. Am I gonna get hit with a season desist? From from who? From the, the guy that robbed her? Probably. Um, okay, so you've got traps and locks in this game. Traps you need a probe, like so, and locks you need a, a lockpick. Hello? Oh, that's a Nick sound. Get out of here. <laughs> oh my god! Having this agility, how did I start with 75 agility? This is ridiculous. This is crazy. Mooncalf. Oh, I think that's from, I think that's from the lover. It is, it is from the lover. So I was thinking that that fortify agility was going to be like an ability um, that I had to, uh, I had to cast, right? That I could just cast on myself once a day. That's what I thought it was. I didn't realize it was a permanent uh, agility buff. That is crazy. That's OP. Oh, that's going to make this so much easier. Fuck yeah. All right, let's have a look at this AI path thing for a minute. <laughs> I 